All right, so we got the version 4.6 special program. I just finished watching it. Some really exciting things in there. Arlequina looks absolutely insane. We'll be diving into her and her kit in a second. I will have the redemption codes from the special program in the comments below. If you're seeing this on the day of posting, they're probably still good. We've been watching the trailer in the background here. I feel like this one definitely was more showcasey. I mean, makes sense. She is like the main character of this patch. She did seem a little evil there at the end, but there's more context for that later. And for anyone confused about who this character is, uh, here's a tiny little lore background. So she basically runs an orphanage called the House of Hearth. She's also known as the Knave and Father to those she orphans, like Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet. She is also the fourth Fatui Harbinger. But yeah, moving on from the trailer, we obviously will have a new story quest for her, as it always is. They did also mention a sort of system optimization here called Focused Experience. In a nutshell, with some quests, you can just toggle something on so that it won't be interrupted by characters being in other quests, which happens to me a a lot as someone who is behind on some. So I thought that was really cool, but it's not for all quests apparently. But yeah, let's move on to what I'm most excited about, Arla Kino herself, her kit and abilities. She is a pyro pull arm user. The quote unquote pull arm definitely looks more like a scythe, which I think is super sick. Honestly, her entire gameplay style looks incredible. She has one mechanic in particular we haven't seen from any heroes, but have seen from some Fatui enemies, the bond of life. The bond of life is this red outline on your HP bar. And when you you get healed, instead of healing any damage you might have, it'll instead reduce the Bond of Life's gauge. How she incorporates that into her kit is pretty interesting, so she can give herself a Bond of Life, and when the value of her Bond of Life is equal to or greater than a certain percentage of her HP, her normal charge plunging attacks will be infused with Pyro. In addition to her normal attacks being infused with Pyro, they will also consume a portion of her current Bond of Life to deal increased damage, and lower the cooldown of her elemental skill. So so yeah, how does she actually get the bond of life? It is slightly complicated, so bear with me. The first step is to use her elemental skill. This is not only an AoE attack, but it'll apply a debuff on the enemy's hit. This debuff will inflict periodic damage on the enemies, but more importantly, when Arlequino then does a charge attack or her burst, she will actually absorb these debuffs into herself that you place on the enemies, giving herself the Bond of Life, which like we said a second ago, is very important for her kit to give her that pyro infusion and to increase the power of her normal attacks. The more enemies you hit with her skill, the more debuffs you absorb, the bigger the Bond of Life will be, which is quite logical. Her burst plays very nicely into the rest of her kit as well. It is also a damaging attack, but it will also heal her based on her current bond of life. Quite reminiscent to Hu Tao's burst, actually. I guess in Arlequino's case, it's a lot more important, so she can heal herself. What that'll also do is reset her skills cooldown, so you can pretty much immediately get a new bond of life going. So one of her passives is pretty interesting. She'll get a pyro damage buff, but she cannot be healed, period except for the healing on her ultimate. That's it, which is honestly kind of a good thing because if you still wanna run a healer in your team and you do some team-wide burst heal, her bond of life won't disappear. But of course, if you had issues with survivability, you could always take a Zhongli or some other shielder. She also has a really cool exploration ability. When you do her charge attack, and I'm assuming you hold that charge attack, she'll pop out one of her wings and you can just glide along. Looks really sick. But yeah, that's Arlequino, definitely main DPS material. I am 100% looking forward to her. She also seems like a very interesting solo character as well. Not that that's super important to most people, but yeah, I mean, she's a self-sufficient DPS like Nuvalot. Really looking forward to trying her out. She will be coming in phase one with Linny, which I feel like is pretty fitting. I know Linny's popular for like speed runs and he's like a good DPS, you know, in general, but... I know who I'm going for, for sure. Of course, we'll be getting her signature weapon, Crimson Moon's semblance as well. As always, they don't give any details on it. Phase two, we have Wanderer and Baiju. I like both of these characters, but I don't really feel like I need or want constellations for them, so I'm most likely skipping this. But yeah, as we alluded to a little earlier, Arlequino, or the Knave, I guess in this case, will be a new weekly boss. I'm gonna go out on a limb, make a risky gamble, and say that uh, Arlequino herself will need these mats to get her talents past six. <laughs> she has at least two phases, one with her being in the ground and one with her being up in the air. Apparently, at least at this part of the story, she's not a bad guy. She's more like, a, you know, friendly challenges sort of thing. Although it is possible I missed something. Regardless, the boss fight looks really cool. There is one special mechanic. Periodically during battle, you will get a bond of life. If you can out heal it, then your next charge attack will be like super powered and it'll do a lot of extra damage. We will also be getting new artifacts. They used to tell us what they do, but now 
they don't anymore, and it makes me so sad. I want to theorize what characters could be good with them, but no, they just show us some pictures. Based on the design, I would say one's for Animo and one's for Hydro, but who knows? We'll also be getting a new story quest for Sino, a new Fontaine area. I believe this is called Remuria. It's like an island, and from what they showed, it seems to be mostly underwater. There will also be a new boss here, possibly more mats required for Arlecchino, so it's going to be a little hard to prepare for her in advance if that's the case. But yeah, as long as you've completed Chapter 3 in the uh, Fontaine Archon quest, there will be a waypoint that automatically unlocks this new area. So pretty Pretty cool. Moving on to events, I like to keep this section relatively short because I typically don't have that many thoughts on events, but this one features one of my favorite characters, Ito. I love Ito. I love his personality. He's so he's so quirky. I also do happen to enjoy like music themed events, and this seems to be that. It's like a music tour. Um, this is, I believe, their main event. Looks like we'll also be getting a free Goro and a free new instrument. The first sort of content seems to be a rhythm game, which again, I'm a big fan of. The next part seems to mostly be item collection, which I'm less of a fan of. It's just a little boring. And then the final piece of this event does appear to be more more about music again. You're supposed to be restoring missing music notes. I'm not sure exactly what that entails, but there you go. As for the smaller events, we do have Wind Trace coming back. It is essentially hide and seek for those that are newer to the game. There are like three hiders and one seeker. They did actually update Wind Trace. The most notable thing to me was that the hiders have an extra life. So if they get caught by the seeker, they'll be put in a little prison for a while, but they can eventually escape and continue playing. Next event, I honestly couldn't take anything away from this. I have no idea what's going on, but apparently this dude wants to be friends with several different bosses. But yeah, besides that, we have seen stuff like this before. It is a combat event. It can be very, very difficult, which I enjoy. I can really push the limits of like characters I had just built or whatever. So I think it might be pretty interesting for showcase reasons. But yeah, you can like remove buffs to yourself to make it harder. It's pretty cool. We also have Vibro Crystal coming back again, a, an event we've seen several times. It is basically another combat event. You give yourself buffs and decide how to trigger the buffs. TCG update, they didn't really say anything about it, so moving on. Overflowing mastery, double talent books, you know how it be. We also got some system optimizations, starting with Serena Teapot. There are like some quick obtain functions, some one-click things, some discounts for furnishings. I'll be honest, I only ever go to the Serena Teapot to collect that uh, the fragile resin thing, so <laughs> I don't care that much, but for those that do like Serena Teapot, that's cool, I suppose. We're getting more avatars to use in our little profile pictures in game. And finally, the one I think is the most useful and best is an upgrade to the treasure compass. Now, when you use the treasure compass and there's a treasure, you know, nearby ish, it'll actually appear on the maps. So you don't have to like just try and follow this weird stream of energy and then who knows which layer it is. But with this new system, it'll actually give you that layer information. And the cooldown was always too long as well because I had to use it multiple times to find one chest. But uh, yeah, pretty nice update there. By far the thing I'm looking forward to the most is Arlecchino, of course. I mean, yeah, it's typical the character is the highlight of the patch. She does look so, so cool though, and I'm really looking forward to trying her out. Let me know what you think though about version 4.6 or Arlecchino in the comments down below. Dropping a like or subscribing to the channel if you enjoyed is always greatly appreciated as well. Thanks as always for watching and until next time.